I love you. It's oh. yours. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> well, in that case, I have to get you some. Oh, great. I know exactly what I want. A flannel nightgown. You're not serious. I know. It's not sexy, but it is practical. There's no heat in our bedroom. It's freezing. It is. Come on. Good morning. Hi, I thought you Sherry Yes, you Hey, don't tell me it's pilot error when the landing gear disintegrated. George. George, if you want me to start an investigation of your safety and maintenance records, you just keep pushing. Now, this was a perfectly healthy 20-year-old boy with his whole life ahead of him. So I suggest you settle it now. What? 400,000? Drop dead, George. Listen, why don't you just take it easy? Leave everything to me. And please, if you need anything, don't hesitate to call. We really appreciate what you're doing, Miss Carney. As soon as I hear anything, I'll let you know. Sherry? Hi. Uh, you must be Rose. Yes, yes. Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. Well, I'm still not sure what this is about. I know you're a social worker. One of your uh, divorce clients, Janet <gasps> Kel... They don't know about that here. It's kind of a moonlighting thing. Oh. Actually, I'm thinking of leaving aviation law, but not till I'm ready. So is this about a divorce? Please sit down. No, no, uh, it's a custody case. The mother is suing for sole custody of her daughter. And the mother's name is? Darlene Holland. And what are the grounds? We believe the father is molesting the child. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Sherry... Janet tells me that you've been active in women's issues. You've worked for legal clinics and rape hotlines. I'm the wrong attorney, Rose. I don't know anything about child molest cases. And to be perfectly honest, I don't want to. I don't know where to turn. I've been to three attorneys. You're all the same. The moment I mention sexual abuse, you all turn off. What is it with you people? This little girl is three years old. We believe her father's been having sex with her since she was one and a half. Well, if that's true, that's horrible. Yes. So why won't you do something to stop it? I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do. Look, why don't you try calling the county bar? They do a lot of referrals. I'm sure that they can help you. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Ah, 
Hi. Look at her. Isn't she gorgeous? Happy anniversary, Daddy. And how's the ailment? Very good, Jack. Happy anniversary. It's about time you showed up. I'm sorry, we're late. We had to stop at Mark's parents' and then we got stuck in traffic. What traffic? It's Sunday. Hello, handsome. Mm -hmm. Happy anniversary, baby. Believe it or not, Mother, people do drive on weekends. I bet you're not late when you have to be in court. Pay attention to her, she'll never change. So, the uh, food's in there and the drink's over here. What can I get you, Mark? Um, soda, beer, wine? Beer's good. Uh, Daddy, where's Linda? I think I saw her in the kitchen. Okay, I'll be back. Okay. Mark, I want you to meet a friend of mine. He's building a house. And I told him you were an architect. Sounds great. 22, 23, 24. Just set the whole thing on fire and forget about it. Hi, baby. <laughs> oh, you look beautiful. I love these earrings. You look terrible. Thank you. What's the matter? Aren't you sleeping again? No, I'm sleeping. Here, put these on. No. Oh, come on. It's a party. A little lipstick, a little blush. No. Just this one. No. The palest pink. And the no. Holy. And the hell's the cake? Anxiety attack? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, it's over now. Oh, God. You're so good. I don't know how you put up with me. Shouldn't we be worried about this? No, no, it's just stress. Yeah, but it's been going on for a long time. Why? I can't help it. You know, things affect me. A, a girl came into the office today. Her entire family was killed in a plane crash. I know, baby, I know, but you should talk to somebody about this. I am... I'm talking to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning. Miss <clears throat> Carney? Yes. I'm uh, Darlene Holland. Rose Beckman talked to you about my custody case. Yes, she did, and I told her that I couldn't take it. Miss Kearney, we're really desperate. We can't find anyone who will handle this case. Is there anything we can do to change your mind? Who are you? I'm Marty Rayburn. I live with Darlene, and Christy's like my own daughter. Darlene still doesn't want to believe it, but I'm telling you something really sick is going on. Where is the child now? McLaren Hall. McLaren Hall? Why? Because after Darlene accused her ex-husband of molesting Christy, he turned around and he accused us of the same thing. Next thing you know, there's investigation and the courts took her away from everybody. I mean, she's all alone in there. And please, Miss Carney, I haven't seen my baby in two weeks. All right, I'll read the file. Thank you so much. Yeah, Miss Carney, you don't know what this means to us. I didn't say yes. I said I'd read the file. <clears throat> What are you 
doing? Want to hear something? This is a regular church-going guy. Middle class, educated, he even coaches Little League. It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm almost done. Mark, this child is performing sex on her dolls. That is a classic sign of sexual abuse. You don't need this, Sherry. We don't need this. All right. Let's go to bed. Call me when you're finished. Your Honor, a three-year-old child does not learn to perform sex acts from storybooks. She does not learn to identify the male sex organ from watching television. The only way Christy Holland could become familiar with anal and oral sex is from experience. For the past 12 months, she has spent every other weekend with her father, Daryl Holland. Medical testimony will reveal that Christy has vaginal and anal scarring that are almost a year old. She bleeds. She has rashes and pain when urinating. Your Honor, Daryl Holland is committing incest with his daughter. It is up to this court to protect Christy from the likes of Daryl Holland by removing her from his custody and barring him from having any further unsupervised contact with her. Your Honor, it's a well-known fact that in many cases of divorce, one party will often use the children as a tool to strike back against the other. How many times have we heard that classic story of the embittered wife who brainwashes her children into making ugly, baseless accusations against their father? Now, two years ago, 
Darlene and Daryl Holland went through an acrimonious divorce, from which Darlene still harbors a great deal of anger and resentment. This entire case is nothing but a vendetta. It's a smear campaign against a loving, caring father by his vindictive ex-wife. And you had no idea that your husband was sexually abusing your daughter? No, it never even crossed my mind. Who would ever dream a grown man would do something like that to a baby? What changed your mind? My boyfriend, Artie. He thought something was going on. He wasn't the first to mention it. There was a boyfriend before who also thought something was wrong. I got this book on incest. I read it. I got really scared. No further questions. You mentioned another boyfriend, Mrs. Holland. Isn't it true that you've lived with a series of boyfriends since your divorce? Objection. I'm merely trying to establish the kind of environment the child's been living in. I'll allow the question. I lived with two other men before, Artie. And isn't it true that you once had sex in a graveyard? Objection! And isn't it true that you stripped naked and did a belly dance at your own wedding? Objection! Your Honor, this is totally irrelevant. Your Honor, the character of the mother is key to... The character of the mother is not on trial. To understanding where the child obtained her sexual information. I'll tell you where she got it, from that pervert over there. Objection! Please! This is not a circus. He's withdrawn, uh, subject to temper tantrums, nightmares, and a preoccupation with sex. These symptoms are of grave concern. They are completely inappropriate for a child of this age. Is someone typing? Is something wrong, Counselor? Your Honor, I hear typing sounds. May we continue? Yes, excuse me, Your Honor. When you put all these symptoms together with the sexual acts Christy demonstrated on the anatomically correct dolls, you get the profile of a child who has been systematically sexually <laughs> Gary, I'm bleeding. Something is really wrong with you. What is it? Please, say something. Uh, I'm sorry. That's it? Great. For months, you stay up all night. But when I want to discuss something important, you want to go to sleep? I'm fine. Everything's under control. Sherry, I'm really worried about you. I am very tired. Please, can we talk about this after the trial? Okay. You okay? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Holland. That was very illuminating. And what kind of work do you do, Mr. Holland? Well, I was in electronics. Does that mean you are currently unemployed? Yes, ma'am, I suppose it does. But as far as I know, that's not a crime now, is it? You share joint physical and legal custody of Christie, do you not? Yes, ma'am, I do. And how often do you see your daughter? Every weekend. Would you please tell the court how you spend your time with her on those weekends? Let me see. Uh, we go to the park, out to eat, a church, every Sunday morning. Where does she sleep when she stays with you? She has her own little bed in the TV room. Does she ever sleep in your bed, Mr. Holland? Once in a while. If there's been a thunderstorm or she's had a bad dream, then she likes to crawl in with her daddy.
Counselor, we're waiting. And when she crawls in with her daddy, do you ever happen to touch her? Of course. I hug her, I kiss her, I hold her, I love her. Did you ever touch her genitals? Objection! Overruled. Answer the question, Mr. Holland. What do you mean by touch? Touch! Touch! You know, feel with your fingers, feel with anything else, touch! Your Honor, she's harassing Excuse with Excuse me, but does anyone here have a Webster's Dictionary so that this man can look up what the word touch means? Counselor, control yourself. I will not tolerate this behavior in my courtroom. Did you ever touch T-O-U-C-H, your daughter's genitals? Well, in a way, but it's not yes what you think. Yes or no. And how many times did you touch her genitals? Twenty times? Two hundred times? Two thousand times? I don't know. Maybe twenty times. Your Honor. Counselor. And would you Step please back. tell the court for what possible reason you did that? Step back, Counselor. Step away from the witness. This is unacceptable. Answer the question, please. Well, she has all these rashes and things. Why? Did you touch your daughter's genitals? To medicate her. Medicate her? There's no bail for you. You're on a two-day hold. Let's go. Okay, you've got five minutes. Sherry, are you all right? Rose, I I'm sorry. I blew the case. I'll never forgive myself. You didn't blow anything. We got a continuance. I'll find you another attorney. Don't worry. Everything will be straightened out. We don't need another attorney. When you left, Darlene stood up and told the judge that she wanted to wait for you. What? We thought you were great. I don't know what transpired in there, Miss Carney. But that was the most shocking display of unprofessionalism I have ever witnessed in my 22 years on the bench. Now, you have three choices. One, you can go back to jail. Two, I can start proceedings to have you disbarred. Or three, I put you on probation and you seek psychological help. 
since your client still wishes to retain you, God only knows why. If you can finish this case with some modicum of decorum, then I will seal your record and strike your contempt conviction. I'll get help, Your Honor. So what do you think these typing sounds mean? I have no idea. Oh, take a guess. Believe me, I tried. I wish I knew. Tell me about these um, anxiety attacks during sex. What exactly do you feel? Trapped. Trapped how? Like I want to get away and I can't. I feel totally helpless. It's pretty terrifying. Do you have any idea what you want to get away from? Sleazy and slimy and horrible. <clears throat> What's your family like? Mm, we're very close. What's your father do? He's um, a West Coast editor of a trade magazine. He worked at home, so my mother went back to school and she became a social worker. We always lived in nice houses, we drove nice cars, we celebrated holidays together. Oh, it sounds like a wonderful life. Mm, it was. But? Well, I didn't always get along with my mother. What do you mean? Well, she was pretty strict. How so? She had this philosophy about raising children. You didn't spoil them. You had to teach them responsibility. And if they misbehaved, they had to be disciplined. Give me an example. Well, we had chores that we had to do, and if we didn't do them the way she liked, she'd punish us. Physically? Yeah, sometimes. Well, what would she do? She'd hit us, punch us. Punch you? Shake us real hard. Just a lot of yelling. My mom had a pretty bad temper. If we didn't clean the kitchen the way she wanted us to, um, she would go into a rage and throw everything out of the pantry onto the floor and then wake my sister and I up at 3 o'clock in the morning and make us clean it. Where was your father during all this? He was there. What would he do? Nothing. Usually he just watch. All rise, Judge George Norton presiding. Your Honor, I would like to recall Daryl Holland to the witness stand. So according to you, all of Christie's injuries were caused by falling off of her bicycle, is that correct? Her pediatrician said the same thing. He said it was possible. And how do you explain the redness and blisters? I blame her mother for that. She buys all of Christie's underpants too tight. They, they cut into her. So it's all because of her bike and her underpants? And how do you account for the results of the psychological evaluation? My ex-wife leads a very wild lifestyle. She put those warped ideas into Christie's young and impressionable mind. So she made it all up. Ma'am, I took a lie detector test and I passed it with flying colors. All the experts agree that I don't fit the profile. That it's impossible for someone like me to be a... 
can't even say it. Incest aggressor. Your Honor, I love my daughter very much. And these sick accusations have destroyed my life. I have been shamed in front of my family and friends. I can't get work because no one will hire me. I swear to you, under oath and before God, that I have never, ever sexually abused anybody in my life. No more questions. He was just sitting there like a little lamb. The man was terrified. Can you imagine being afraid of me? Sure, you were in jail and you didn't call me? I was too embarrassed. I can't believe you never told me. I just didn't want to talk about it. <sighs> well, so now you're in therapy. Mm hmm. You never know. Maybe it's for the best. What does that mean? Oh, come on, Sherry. There's a lot of stuff going on with you. Like what? You know, like what? No, I don't. Maybe you should tell me. Your phobia about makeup? The way your clothes are all too big? They happen to be comfortable. You have anxiety attacks. You have trouble sleeping. Now you're hearing things. I am never telling you anything again. Wait, Sherry. Sherry! Wait! Wait, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. Well, what are you saying? That I'm crazy? No! No! Look, we all have problems. Now you get a chance to work yours out. Every child deserves a father. Conversely, no parent should be deprived of their child. However, it is this court's opinion that Darlene Holland and Christine Holland appear to have suffered a severe trauma due to a painful divorce, which temporarily mitigates the circumstances. The court is ordering mother and child into counseling sessions for six months, during which time all visitation rights of Darrell Holland will be suspended. After six months, complete visitation will be resumed. The child will see her father every weekend, Two weeks at Christmas and three months in the summertime. Court is adjourned. What? Your Honor, what about counseling for the perpetrator? There is no evidence of Mr. Holland's guilt. What about all the medical testimony? I do not believe this man is capable of that kind of a crime. Why? Because he looks good in a suit? Watch yourself, Counselor. Do you realize what you're doing? In six months, he's going to be raping her again. stomach. In six months it'll be worse. Now he knows he can do whatever he wants and get away with it. I want another case, Rose. I'm fine. You coming to bed? No, I still have some reading to do. Can't wait till tomorrow? Actually, no, I'm behind enough as it is. Well, how long do you think it'll take? I don't know, Mark. Until I'm finished. <sighs> and, um, this little girl in the dream, is that you? I don't know. Well, who else could it be? Well, it could be Christy, couldn't it? And the person she's afraid of? Her father. You saw his face? 
No. But you're sure it was a man? Well, it had to be him. Who else could it be? You have flashbacks? Nightmares? You're sexually dysfunctional? And you're afraid of intimacy? Sherry, have you ever been raped? No. Oh, I would remember if I had, wouldn't I? But you do remember your mother physically abusing you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask you to write a letter to your mother. Just expressing how you feel about that. Your anger, your fear, whatever comes up for you. And then bring it in and we'll have a look at it. But what good would that do? Well, sometimes just writing these things down will kind of bring up memories that otherwise we repress. Memories? What kind of memories? Who knows? Hi! <clears throat> How was your day? Rose Beckman called. Good. Anybody else? Why didn't you tell me you took another incest case? Because I knew you wouldn't want me to, and I didn't want to fight about it. We barely see each other. We never make love anymore. You had a breakdown over the last it incest case. It wasn't a breakdown. Well, what are your priorities? Do you mind telling me? Do I count for anything? Don't yell at me. I'm not yelling. I just, I don't understand you anymore, Sherry. I don't know what you're doing. I'm doing the best that I can. And then Chuck puts on the puppet. He puts on Bongo, and what does he say? Come on, Julia, sweetie. Let me tell the judge. Don't be afraid. Bongo's gonna get you. Chuck says Bongo's gonna get you, and then what happens? It's okay, sweetie. Tell the judge. We play. How do you play? What's the game? Bongo tickles me. Does Bongo do anything besides tickle you, Julia? He puts his hand in there and robs me. Okay, that's it. No more questions. Why don't you go outside with Rose and wait for me? Your Honor, I think it's obvious from this testimony that the stepfather is preparing the child for intercourse. You cannot send her back to this family. I see here that the real father who's suing for custody is having financial problems. That has to be considered too, Counselor. Why? Is money more important than the fact that that child is being molested? I'm just not buying this, Counselor. I've met the mother and the stepfather, and they're intelligent, educated people. Thank you. Mark? Hello? Are you home? Who's here? What's the matter with you? Mark left me. 
Oh, no. Well, what happened? I was working on this case, and it was upsetting me and taking all of my time, and I guess I just wasn't there for him. Well, how do you expect to keep a man around if you don't even spend any time with him? Well, I tried to give him all the time that I could. Boys like Mark don't grow on trees. And you're no raving beauty, you know. Oh, Viv, come on. What? You've got something to say? How could you do this? How stupid could you get? Of course, I'm not surprised. I know what you're like. He was a saint to put up with you as long as he did. Thank you for your support, Mother. Don't you open your big mouth to me. It's a good thing we gave you an education. Because at the rate you're going, you're going to end up alone for the rest of your life. Dear Mom, you betrayed me. You were never a mother I could turn to. Never a mother I could run to and be kissed and held and protected from the world. You were never my savior, but my tormentor. You tortured me, you hit me, you criticized me beyond all bounds of human endurance. I was terrified of you, and so was Linda. You pretended to the world that you were a kind, loving human being, but in fact, you were a monster. You forced me to take all the brutality and remain nice and sweet and caring, but inside I was dying piece by piece. No wonder Mark left me. I'm an emotional mess. Closeness to me means death to myself. I hate you, Mom. I will never forgive you for the physical and emotional abuse you put me through and the incest from Dad. What? Sherry. What? Read that last sentence. I hate you, Mom, and I will never forgive you for the physical and emotional abuse you put me through and the incest from Dad. No. No, Dad. No. 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 No, 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 no. The way I see it, you have two choices. You can either sit here and drive yourself crazy wondering if you imagined the whole thing, or you can do whatever it takes to find out what really happened. What if I don't want to know? You've been in touch with your therapist? Mm-hmm. And? She wants to hypnotize me. Do it. Sooner the better. It's not that easy, Rose. Sherry, how can you ask these children to tell the truth if you're not willing to face it yourself? Just let all of your muscles go. Just completely relax. Just relax. That's right. Now take a nice deep breath and exhale slowly. Let all the air out. That's right. Now one more time. Nice deep breath. see our old house in Culver City with my dad's green car parked in the driveway. Now I see inside. I see the floor with the black and white squares. I'm in my bedroom now. I can see the pink and blue window. I can see my sister's bed. I can smell the baby smells. I can see across the hall. Someone's typing. It's 
again. He stopped typing. He's coming across the hall. Now he's coming into my room. I don't feel so good. Shh. It's okay. Daddy loves you. Is he saying anything to you? He says, Don't tell anyone, Sherry. This is our little secret. You're my special girl. This is it. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Would you mind telling us what this is all about? What's the big secret? We'll talk about it with Joan. I've never even heard of this woman. Who does she think she is asking me to come to her office? She didn't ask you, Mother. I did. Mr. and Mrs. Carney, I'm Joan Del Vecchio. Won't you come inside? Sherry? Sit down, please. Sherry has invited you here for what's called a parent confrontation. Now, the purpose of it is for you to hear what she has to say, and then for you to respond and discuss it. Do you happen to have a resume I could see? A resume? Well, I'm a psychiatric social worker. I don't know if Sherry happened to mention that. And I'm a little curious about your credentials. Where did you do your doctorate? UCLA. I see. And uh, do you mind telling me where you did your internship? Vivian, for God's sakes, what's the difference? Let's just get to the point. I agree with you, Mr. Carney. This is not about my credentials. It's about your daughter, and she has something very important to say to both of you. So? What is it already? This is very hard for me. But I have to tell you. I've discovered in therapy that I'm an incest victim. Oh, my God. And it was you, Dad. You incested me from the time I was a baby until I was five years old. You had oral sex with me. You played sex games. Are you crazy? How dare you say that to me? This isn't about you, Dad. This is about me and what I've been through. You're out of your mind. This is outrageous. I never touched you. How can you even think such a thing? Because I remember. What do you remember? You were a baby. I remember his touch. I remember his smell. Oh, my God. I remember him getting undressed, changing his clothes in my room. Jack? That's it. I'm getting out of here. Mr. Carney, please sit down and hear this out. I don't want to hear another word, Vivian. Let's go. Maybe it was a neighbor. You're mixing it up. No, Mom. It was Dad. And you know what? I think you knew. What? Why are you listening to this garbage? You knew what he was doing, and you never stopped him. You're insane. You stood by and looked the other way, and then you emotionally and physically abused me to pay me back. Oh, dare you talk that way to your mother. And I'd just like to ask you, Mom, why did you hate me so much? I never hated you. What did I ever do to deserve that? Viv, let's go. You're a twisted, disgusting girl. Mrs. Carney, please. Don't you talk to me. I blame you for this. You put the demented ideas in her head. We gave you everything. And this is how you repay us? I will never forgive you for this. Never. Let's 
good. This is real good. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? I thought that they would admit it. I thought that they would take me in their arms and ask how they could make it up to me. <laughs> are you doing to our family? Look, I know you're upset about what happened with mom and dad. Upset? I was on the phone all night with mom and dad. They're hysterical. What is this? I quit my job. What do you mean you quit your job? I'm going to open a bar review course and use the money to fund incest cases. You're obsessed. You know that? You've gone off the deep end. How could you say those horrible, ugly things to them? Linda, our father incested me. Don't you say that! Oh, come on, we've been talking about this for years. I'm ashamed of my body. I have horrible nightmares. I'm terrified of sex. Oh, so now it's dead. I was hypnotized. There is no proof. Oh, my whole life is proof. Oh, please, you had everything. You were the baby. You were Dad's favorite. He molested me, Linda. That's not what he says. He's lying. He says you're lying. Why would I lie about something like this? What am I supposed to do? I don't know who to believe. He says one thing, you say another. I'm stuck in the middle. There is no middle. Either you believe me, or you don't. I don't know who to believe. He's my father, too. And I'm your sister. Please believe me, Linda. I need you to believe me. These cases are being lost all over the country. Now, as far as I know, not one child's testimony has held up in court against an adult. Here it is, torts. So, I was thinking, what if the child were a teenager? Wouldn't she be more likely to be believed? But if she was a teenager, it wouldn't be custody. No. I'm thinking of the civil suit, Rose. Suing the perpetrator for damages. She may not put him in jail, but just maybe she could win a settlement for her pain and suffering. Can you do that? <sighs> Look at this. The statute of limitations for torts for minors is one year from their 18th birthday. Meaning what, exactly? Meaning that we have until a child turns 19 to make a case. And an 18-year-old is going to be a lot more articulate than a 6-year-old. Is incest a tort? A tort is a personal injury. If that's not incest, I don't know what is. I think you've got a very good case here, Kelly. 
Not only against your brothers, but against your parents and the church. We're going to sue the church? You told three clergymen that your three older brothers were molesting you and they did absolutely nothing to stop it. But isn't it a sin to sue the church? Kelly. Kelly. Your brothers have been raping you for eight years. Your mother knew, your father knew, and three religious teachers knew. I don't think you're the sinner here. <coughs> I know how difficult this is, and if you don't want to go through with it, I understand. No. It has to stop. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> now, I have to warn you. This isn't going to be easy. Your parents may get very angry with you, not to mention your siblings. They're going to yell and scream and call you names. They're going to accuse you of betraying your family. You're going to feel very alone. I've felt alone my entire life. This takes a lot of courage. I am very proud of you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and initiate proceedings and file a complaint and have it served. And in the meantime, I want you to move out of your house immediately. Where? Oh, don't worry. We'll find you an apartment. I'll lend you the money. Also, I strongly suggest that you have no contact with your family right now. Okay. We'll talk every day and we'll spend lots of time together. I'm very optimistic, Kelly. There is no way the court can negate your testimony. Hi. Hi. Boy, you look great. Thank you. So? How, uh, how's your work coming along? Well, I've got a new case that I'm very excited about. But I'm sure you didn't call me to discuss my career. That's true. Why did you call me? I wanted to talk to you about Dad. Okay. I want to show you something. I want you to read this. What is this? A psychologist report. Dad was so upset by your accusations, he had himself tested. There's no way he could have done it, Sherry. He doesn't fit the profile. There are no profiles. He took a lie detector test. Do you know how many incest perpetrators pass lie detector tests? You don't give an inch, do you? Well, if he would just admit it... Maybe you should admit you made a mistake. All right, I gotta go. Kelly? She's dropping the case. Can we talk privately for a minute, please? She has got nothing to say to you. She's coming home where she belongs. Don't let them pressure you. My mom and I talked everything over last night, and she promised me things are going to change. You don't have to decide right now. Just take some time and think about it. Hey, lady, she already told Excuse you. Excuse me, sir. But I happen to be talking to my client. And if you continue harassing me, I will find a bailiff and have you ejected from this courthouse. You realize that in a year it'll be too late. The statute of limitations will run out when you turn 19. Right now, you have the opportunity to make your brothers accountable, to force your parents and the church... I don't want to force them to do anything. I want to go home. Home to what? I told you, things are going to be different. 
You know, Kelly, sometime you're going to have to decide whose side you're on. Theirs or your own. If you need anything, you call me, okay? Wrong. I got a call today from Darlene Holland. Christy's been hospitalized. She's turned psychotic. Damn it! What is going on, Rose? What kind of a world do we live in? I don't know. You can't win. No matter what you do, you can't win. What, the perpetrator gets off scot-free and the victim serves a lifelong sentence? There's only one way to make those bastards accountable. How? We need to change the law. You're dreaming. You know how hard that is. You can't be any worse than being raped by my father. If I can survive that, I can do anything. Chatford. Stephanie, hi. Um, my name is Sherry Carney, and I'm an attorney in Los Angeles specializing in incest cases. Really? Yes, I, I was reading through some briefs that I borrowed from the ACLU, and I found your name. I can't believe this. You've been trying to overturn the statute of limitations? Yes, that's right. Well, so have I. You're kidding. I thought I was all alone on this. <laughs> Until now, so did I. Well, maybe we ought to get together and compare notes. Exactly what I was thinking. Are you free tomorrow? Basically, we need a strong legal argument that will overcome the dismissal of adult incest cases past the age of 19. I think I have it. What? Delayed discovery. The guy has a gallbladder operation. He doesn't find out for six months that they leave the sponge in. Complications set in, infections, he can't go back to work. Statute of limitations has run out, but he can still sue for medical malpractice. Why delay discovery? There's no way he could have known about the sponge until they opened him up again. Okay, now it's incest. A child represses the abuse until she's 30 years old. Meanwhile, she fails in school. She has all kinds of physical, emotional problems. Her life's a mess. She doesn't know why. It's exactly the same thing. Delayed discovery. There's no way she could have known about her emotional problems until she remembered the incest. Therefore, incest lawsuits should be exempt from all time constraints. Because a fixed statute of limitations deprives the victim from ever having rights against the perpetrator. Exactly. Oh, you know what? This could work. First, we plant seeds. Then we interview prospective clients, choose 10 or 15 of the strongest cases, and file suits all over the state. Good. We challenge the statute based on delayed discovery and push the law to the limit. We're going to need support on this. If we could get, say, five statewide organizations to sign on to a brief to present to the courts, we'd have a much stronger case. I think we should also work on getting a bill passed in the legislature. It's a bad idea. Why? This is a judicial decision. It should come from the courts. Yeah, but if we rely solely on the courts, we leave everything in the hands of the judges. So? They're men. 
Sherry, who do you think sits on the legislature? Well, that's why two avenues are better than one. It doubles our chances. No, it's too much. Come on, we better go. We can't divide our focus. We should just concentrate on the court case and see what happens. Rachel, <clears throat> before we begin, I just want to say that I know this is going to be hard. I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions, some of which may be painful, even embarrassing. But I want you to remember that I am also an incest victim. I know what you've been through, and I'm on your side. remembered your father sexually abusing you? 24 it was just last year when I remembered my father's abuse. And what did you turn to to escape this abuse? Alcohol. Sex. You name it, I did it. How old were you when you started doing these things? Alcohol, 13. Drugs and sex, 14. How old are you now? 25. Rachel. What was your emotional state during those years? I hated myself. I wanted to die. I tried to kill myself four times. Did you have any idea at the time of those suicide attempts why you felt so bad? Objection. Calls for speculation. Sustained. Your Honor, the crux of this argument is based on the fact that although Miss Fowler does not remember her incest... Objection. There is no proof of any incest. Sustained. Rachel, did you discuss your feelings with a therapist? Yes. And what did she say? Objection. Hearsay? Sustained. Your Honor. Don't look at me, Counselor. The burden of proof is yours. One can only imagine how difficult it must have been as a child dealing with these feelings. And since it was a parent who was abusing you, this must have compounded the problem. It's the perfect crime. When you're a baby, you can't remember. When you're a child, nobody believes you. When you're a teenager, your family blackmails you into keeping your mouth shut. Mm. And by the time you're old enough to do anything about it... Jack! The law says sorry. Still Jack, ready? get in here! And I had no idea what had happened to me until I was almost 30 years old. Jack, There's look! There's millions of incest survivors out there like me who repressed these memories as children because they were psychologically unable to cope with them. That's why my partner, Stephanie Chadford, and I have launched a us? major battle in... What did she say? Did she mention my name? Do you know how many people watch this show? ...adult survivors of incest to sue their perpetrators. Sherry, let's go back to your own incest experience. How oh, my God. I was six months old when my father began sexually abusing me, and it lasted until I was around five. Colin. Did you hear me? Call Linda! You have no right to do this. I had every right. It's my life. Sherry, it's our lives, too. Going into therapy is one thing. Going on television... Well, maybe if more incest victims went public, their perpetrators would think twice before they tried anything. Oh, God. Get off your soapbox. You're not doing this for anybody else. You're doing this to get back at Mom and Dad. For what, Linda? If nothing happened, then what am I trying to get back at them for? You know, if I can save one child by telling my story, then maybe that'll compensate for losing my family.
I don't want this anymore. Last year, I was arrested for drunk driving. The judge sentenced me to mandatory treatment for alcoholism. When I finally got sober, I went into therapy. And what happened there? I started to have uh, flashbacks. And then memories of my father. What kind of memories? He molested me. And he raped me. And sodomized me. From when I was a little baby. Until I was six years old. Well, the court has much sympathy for the plaintiff and her painful ordeal. As a matter of law, we find that we have no choice but to dismiss the case of Rachel Fowler versus Philip Fowler. The case has no validity based on the fact that the applicable statute of limitations for incest has run out on this claim. We're going to file for an immediate appeal, Your Honor? That's up to you, Counselor. The jury is dismissed. Please. Don't worry. This was just a stepping stone. It's the Court of Appeals that matters. That's where the legal precedent is set. It had nothing to do with you. You did a great job. Yes. How long until the appeal? Probably a year or two. That long? Uh, I'm just going to get some air. I'll see you outside, okay? Okay. okay. All right. You wanted to focus on the courts? We focused on the courts. It's my turn. I want to write legislation. Sherry, no, this no, is one case. No, no, I want to hear it, Steph. The appellate court is packed with right-wing judges, and in the next two years, it's only going to get worse. We need to pass a law. Okay, you win. The law we're proposing is sponsored by the American Coalition Against Rape, as well as Senator Sorensen of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Basically, it states that any victim of child molestation or incest has an automatic right to sue until his or her 26th birthday. If they're older than 26, what is called delayed discovery will be applied. Then they have three years to sue from the date they discovered that they were psychologically injured. Who determines that? Affidavits from therapists are submitted, and then it's up to the jury. How do you prove psychological injury? Won't some people try and exploit this law in order to get back at their parents? No, we don't think so. The process is very long and arduous. Do you really think that it's fair to prosecute somebody so many years after the fact? We go after war criminals, don't we? The chairman of the committee's name is George Dobbins, and I gotta tell you, he is emphatically opposed to this bill. Our only chance is to win over the other members of the Judiciary Committee. So, be calm, be clear, and no matter what, don't antagonize anyone. What concerns me, young lady, are the rights of the defendants. Innocent fathers could be falsely accused and held accountable for acts that supposedly took place 30 years ago. As the law now exists, Mr. Chairman, it is unfairly biased in the opposite direction. The defendants have all the rights and their victims have none. That's not the point. No. The point is that we are trying to redress this imbalance and give the victim her day in court. And when the witnesses are dead and no one can remember? Let the jury decide, as in any other crime. A jury trial can go on for years. In the meantime, honest men's lives can be ruined. What doesn't that matter to you? Excuse me, sir, but why are you more concerned about a bunch of child molesters than you are with their victims? I'm 
concerned, Senator, about the question of retroactivity. Because let me tell you right now, I am not at all comfortable with the idea that cases filed years into the past could be covered under this bill. I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. The bill should not be retroactive. That's not what he said. He's trying to cut a deal. In other words, the bill will cover only those cases filed after it's been passed. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, but I believe the Senator is confused. There is no question that this bill is retroactive. Well, I'm not sure about that. I'm sure the Senator remembers that we decided that time is not important. It's the abuse that counts. Retroactivity could create an enormous backlog in the courts. It appears you people don't even know what your own bill is. Therefore, I'm going to table it until you figure it out. Next bill. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, you can't... Let's move on to other business. Senate Bill 118, is that right? Okay, we had a setback. A setback? It took us five years to get in there. You just destroyed everything in five minutes. I'm sorry, Senator, but we have several clients who are in the middle of court cases, including Rachel Fowler, and I'm not about to sell them out. For your information, this bill is not just about what you want. Look, I'm sure we can find a way to reintroduce the bill next session. That's just three months from now. Yeah, right. Now that you've alienated the entire committee, Dobbins can table this bill for up to two years. Personally, I don't have another two years to put into this, and I doubt anyone else does either. Well, we can't give up now. That would be crazy. Well, maybe you should go back to L.A. and let us figure this out ourselves. I don't believe this. Are you kicking me out? You're a loose cannon, Sherry. Just don't know how to control yourself. Aren't you going to say anything? Fine. If that's the way you want it, I'll go. I missed you so much. I missed you too. You look great. <laughs> you look like hell. <laughs> we met over a year ago at a faculty picnic. He's um he's sensitive. He's intelligent. He's a wonderful man. <laughs> and uh, we're getting married in June. Oh. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> That's great. Will you be my maid of honor? Um, thank you for asking, Linda, but... I can't do that. Please, Sherry, please. I don't want to get married without you. I can't believe you're asking me this after all that's happened. This means so much to me. Please, Cher. Can't you put it aside for one day? I haven't talked to them in years. They want you to come. They know I'm asking you, and they want you to be there. You're all still acting like it never happened. No. I know something happened. I can't pretend anymore. It's not possible. But you're still with them. I'm not as strong as you, Sherry. I need my family. I need a father and a mother and a sister in my life. And I want you all there at my wedding.
I'm bored and I'm frustrated and, and I miss you. Everybody's entitled to one mistake. Please forgive me. You really hurt me, Steph. I know I did. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. Sit down. So, how's it going? Well, let me put it like this. It's taking longer to rewrite this bill than it took to form the Grand Canyon. You know, these boys love to talk. We're supposed to take it back to committee in June. But nobody has any idea how to handle Dobbins. Is that why you're here? Let's face it, Sherry. When it comes to brilliant, conniving, manipulative ideas, you're the pro. <laughs> you really think this will work? Trust me. Diana, we need a favor. Call the New York Times and pitch them this article. Then, contact George Dobbins and several other representatives from the legislature. Tell them you've got a tape recorder running, and you'd like to know their opinion on Senate Bill 108. We think this will work if you tell them it's only research. Ask them what they're going to do, how long they're going to keep it in committee. We'll give you a list of questions. Will this help get it passed? Are you kidding? Do you think they'll come out on the side of child molesters if they think the New York Times is watching? Give me their names. Oh, yes. Uh, this is Rose Beckman calling. I'm calling on behalf of the committee that's been formed to pass Senate Bill 108. I'm calling all of the therapists in your district and asking people to call Senator George Dobbins. Hi, is this yeah, the Open Rape Crisis Center? Is it concerted effort on yes, part? I'm calling to talk to you today about Senate Bill 108. Do you happen to know about that bill? Could I send you some literature that we have? Thank you so much. We need all the support we can get. Send your telegrams to Senator George Dobbins, 201 State Street. Yes, that's Sacramento. Thank you again. Bye bye. Thanks so much for your number. No, he hasn't made a decision yet. Uh, will you hold, please? Senator Dobbins' office. Senator Dobbins' office, please hold. Don't tell me SB 108. That is the 15th call this morning. All therapists and incest victims wanting to know how you're going to vote. Yesterday we had over a hundred. Yeah, it's those damn women lawyers. First the New York Times and now this. They're trying to railroad me into pushing their bills for the committee. Senator Dobbins, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Quiet, please. Please come to order. I will now call for the vote on Senate Bill 108. Assemblyman Axel Ford, how do you vote? Yes. Assemblyman Hemmings. I vote yes. Assemblyman Biondi? No. How many do we need? Six. We need six. I'm next. I abstain. Assemblyman Frankel? Absolutely yes. Assemblyman Hilliard? Yes. Assemblyman Macy? No. Assemblyman Levinsky? Yes. Assemblyman Thorpe? No. Assemblyman Waterston? Yes. Yes! Court is now in session.
The court cannot help but recognize that because the crime of incest is so heinous, and because the perpetrator is a parent or someone the child knows and trusts, there is great probability that the victim would repress all memory of the incest. Therefore, the court does acknowledge that delayed discovery applies to victims of child sexual abuse. To hold otherwise would punish an innocent victim and reward the perpetrator. This was not the intention nor the purpose of the statute of limitations. Therefore, the Sixth Circuit California Court of Appeals finds in favor of the appellant Rachel Fowler. Court is adjourned. I won. I won. I really won. I bet you did. And you deserve it. You don't understand. This is the first good thing to ever happen to me in my life. But not the last. I promise you that. Thank you for all your support because without you I would have never done it.